Bill Kohler and Janessa, and they brought their baby. Live. Live! Ah, hey, everybody! Hey! It's a Hard Science Live Q&A. What's up? We're going to take questions and stuff. I yeah. was telling a baby story. I know. I, I didn't was want to interrupt in, you. I was in the middle of a baby story, and we went live. But it was, it was a good baby story. It was story. good. I trust it was good. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm assuming most of the people are here because they've watched the show. They know yes. what the show is. We do a show. It's called Hard Science. We do it every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you guys already watch. And uh, we're here today to take your questions because you guys are awesome. Yeah. We're sure you have questions that are equally awesome. That hopefully we will be able to answer. <laughs> uh, I'm not a PhD, so... I'm not a smart man. <laughs> Let's I'm just practice a, this immediately. I, ask your questions, but you should know that I am not a smart <laughs> man. Um, uh, Millie on Basic asks, do animals need sleep? You yeah. don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Uh, we think so. We think uh, just about all living things need sleep or some sort of rest state. Uh, certainly all larger mammals and land creatures and, and even sea animals need sleep. Uh, I think the giraffe is the land animal that needs the least amount of sleep. I think it's something like an hour a day or something like that. Yeah, and then like some bats need like 20. And then as you get down into like smaller invertebrates and things like that, uh, it's not recognizable as sleep because they don't have all the complicated features yeah. that we have, but there is like a rest state that's going in. Mm -hmm. So yes, we do think that all things pretty much sleep. Good question. Yeah, we like that. Uh, do you see one that you like? Um, let's see. There's a bunch of questions here. You've got some on your laptop, and there's some up here. Um, oh, there are usually a bunch of other people in the background helping with the experiment. Will we ever get to meet them on camera? Uh, no, we don't let them speak. Yeah. They are. It is in their contracts. They're unpaid extras. Never look Miss Long directly in the eyes. <gasps> That's the rule. That's true. Even sitting um, next to her here. No, we have a great team. Yeah, we do. We've got a team. Um, our producer, Nicolette, mm -hmm. is awesome. You might have seen her in a couple shots. Uh, our intern, Kendall, which is the, whenever you see people ask in the comments, who's the hot girl at 207, they're not talking about me. They're talking about Kendall. I think, I think no. they're talking, I think, no, you know, some of them are talking they're about talking you. They're talking about Kendall, our intern. Know. Who knows? Young and impressionable Kendall. You don't. She is young and impressionable. Um, and then... I don't like the way you guys are talking to Kendall. <laughs> You'd yeah, she's cool. underage. You'd be cruel. She's, she's under 12 age. years old. She's fair game. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Michael Baca, our shooter, editor, mm -hmm. you probably don't see him because he's usually behind the camera. Um, but we usually have a team of six or seven people on staff at any time. And we've also got some science advisors there just to make sure that we don't blow yes. our heads off. For They're the best. We, are, we have two science advisors, Kishore and Zeke. Uh, and they are uh, they are actual science teachers, and what's great is like we will come up with a basic idea, mm -hmm. like a thing that we the thing that we think like theoretically this could work, right? Like yeah. maybe we could do. And Kishore and Zeke will just be like, "Here's why it's not going to work, <laughs> and why you're also going to die." <laughs> They're our dream crushers, basically. Um, but they also help us get a lot of the experiments that we do off the ground, yeah, in a safe manner, which is very important. Um, let's see. Information about breathable liquids. I actually did an entire D-News video about breathable liquids and, and how they work and how you can breathe underwater. And uh, maybe uh, we can put that maybe in the, in the chat or in the discussions because mm -hmm. uh, there are breathable liquids or semi-breathable liquids. Uh, they're mostly being used now uh, less as like breathable liquids, like I'm going to swallow a bunch of this and then go swimming for like 45 minutes, mm -hmm. and more as like you have a punctured lung you can't breathe, you're leaking fluid. If we fill your lung with this, you'll be able to breathe for like five to ten minutes. Uh, and that stuff is really, really cool. But I always dreamed of breathable liquid. It's funny you say that because a recurring dream that I have is that I'm able to breathe underwater. And I always get so mad when I wake up and realize that it will never happen for me. Did you ever see that movie, The, uh, the Abyss? No, I haven't. Movie. So that's, they have this liquid that lets them breathe underwater. And I saw that when I was little and it just stuck with me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was so amazing. And in one of the scenes, there's a rat, and they put the they put the rat in the liquid, and it breathes and it struggles, right? Because it's your body's resisting it. Yeah. Um, and it looked like it was animatronic, but they used a real rat and actual experimental breathable liquid to do it. Hmm. So that was a real rat doing that. Uh, and one of the reasons that breathable liquids can't be used um, regularly is uh, takes a lot of effort to expel liquid from your lungs and to take liquid into your lungs. 
so it's not a very efficient way to breathe. <laughs> You're wasting a lot of the energy on actually trying to physically breathe, which mm -hmm. is something that takes no effort. But yeah. oh, man, I wish I had a breathable liquid. I wish or just like, like pills or something. Dreaming. Yeah. Uh, more questions. Let's see. Um, somebody asked, where did that one go? What's the hardest part of doing the experiments and shooting a video? Oh, gosh. Sometimes we encounter hurdles in our experiments where we don't think it will be possible. Yeah. And so far, we have mostly made everything work. We have a video coming next week. I believe it's next week. Where we did we did something. You'll see. Well, I think it's going to be kept in the actual video. You'll see. We we nearly didn't get it to work, mm -hmm. and that happens a lot. Sometimes we we have things. The stuff you see in the video is not the final effect or the only final effect that we really wanted. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have these dream effects, and we're just like, well, let's roll the dice and see if they happen. And, you know, science isn't an exact science, yeah. you guys. <laughs> Anthony Carboni, <laughs> PhD. <laughs> Any good questions over there? Um, what more? What can we do to ensure that there are more instances of Anthony Carboni dancing in videos? Uh, just have me show up. Yeah, <laughs> that's really all it takes. You'd be surprised. This guy is like at a rave 24/7, pretty you, much inside of his head. You don't go into dance enough. We're like we're sort of like a reverse Dharma and Greg. You and I. You know, you and I <laughs> we do some games content over on Rep3 Games, and mm -hmm. I feel like I reached my dancing quota mm -hmm. for that channel. Okay. And so I, I feel like there's not much dance left in me after that. That's the saddest thing I I've know, ever heard. I know. But also, I have a, I think, a public I, reputation to worry about. So. I think the dance is still inside you. I think if the dance isn't inside you. You're um. You're probably dead. I'm probably dead. <laughs> That's what I think. Science. Uh, let's see. Is there always the same amount of water on the planet, just in different forms, or are we ever losing water? That's a good question, actually. I don't know if I know the answer to that. Uh, I mean, it's it's certainly not the most finite resource that we have, but you know, everything. Uh, every time something is used, every time you have any kind of reaction or use of something, uh, there is a byproduct, there is a waste, there is something that goes away. So, yes, like, <laughs> like we're drinking water, we're taking in water, we're using water every day, and then there's just the natural cycle right. of, of what. And so I would imagine, yeah, we're probably we're probably slowly lo losing water. I don't know off the top of my head, but I can't imagine it's something that's when you're talking about dr drinkable water, clean water. Things like that. That's probably a, that's a more finite resource. But if you're talking total water on the planet, I don't know how much that's disappearing. Yeah, because the evaporation condensation cycle, I figure, mm -hmm. is just sort of a continuous thing that keeps going forever and ever. I mean, at least we'll be long dead by the time the ocean dries up. Yeah, I don't care about it because I'll be dead. I got all the water I need. Sorry, future generations. I always think like this is not something that we could do on hard science or in life ever. But one of the coolest things I think we could see is if we drained the ocean and just saw what was underneath. Mm -hmm. Imagine all the crap that's in there. There's a lot of crap in there. There's a lot. Imagine how many new species of animals we would discover. God, I wish we could do that. What was it? It was something. Uh, gosh, where would where did the where did the figure come from? It may just be like this apocryphal thing or this thing that's been passed down a lot. But I want to say that they did some sort of census of the different animals and species in New York City, and if you could, like, shake one New York City block upside down, mm -hmm. you would get something like 40,000 animals that, oh, you didn't, that you didn't expect that you don't see. 39,000 of them would be rats. Cannibal rats. Um, oh, that's, a, that's a sad one. Nobody likes your shirt. Uh, actually, our programming, <coughs> our, our VP of programming, Tom Lofthouse, got me this shirt. Imaginary Foundation. Imaginary Foundation. I like it. This is where, uh, if you watch a lot of Test 2 stuff, Jason Silva owns, like, every Imaginary Foundation shirt. Oh. So Tom got me one. Um, is it true that humans cannot truly multitask? Yes, that's 100% true. Uh, what we do is serial tasking, and we do it very, very quickly and efficiently. So uh, if, you need, if you're reading and you're listening to music... At the same time, you'll probably notice that one tends to fade out a little bit on you. You're paying less attention to one than the other. Uh, if you're listening to a podcast and you're writing, you know, just about anything you're trying to do, or even if you're trying to like answer emails, be on Twitter, and write, what you're doing is you're serial tasking. So your brain is just switching, 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 switching. 
And uh, the problem with that is you don't really get into a lot of your deeper brain activity, and you don't get into a lot of the trains of thought that you get if you spend uh, a lot of unbroken time concentrating on the same thing. That's true. I feel that way just when I'm doing work. I have to, I have to like, when I'm writing a script for D-News, there's a period of time where I call just, like, the, the red zone, or if you watch Archer, I call it the danger zone, <laughs> where, like, I have 40 minutes before I have to be in the studio, and I'm just like, I have been answering nothing but stupid social media stuff. Yep. Lock everything down and keep nothing but my needed articles and my word processor yep. open, because otherwise it won't happen. Maybe that's why we work better under pressure. I cannot open Twitter when I'm trying to write stuff. It just does not work. Um, somebody said there's a scene in a movie called I, Frankenstein where two scientists bring a dead rat back to life using electrical force. Can you bring life to anything dead? Uh, a defibrillator can, but the problem is that after a minute or two of being dead, you pretty much become brain dead. The lack of oxygen causes severe, irreversible psychological damage. So uh, Mary Shelley got the entire idea from Frank, uh, for Frankenstein, the original book, from um, experiments that were being done at the time where things like electrodes were being hooked up to two terminals of a battery were being hooked up to frogs and, and other dead animals like that, and they would twitch. And that's why they thought that they that they were going to be able to bring Frankenstein back from the dead. But it's it's really um, just that your, your nervous system and the electrical system inside your body has not degraded uh, quite enough yet, and rigor mortis is not set in quite enough. So you're twitching the same way you would if you got electrocuted and you're alive. It's an involuntary thing. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily a sign of life. You know what's interesting? My dad told me this over Christmas break because he's like a meat scientist. Apparently one of the leading meat scientists in the country. So uh, when you when your body goes through rigor mortis, um, in cows for instance, mm -hmm. the only part of your body that doesn't do it is like your lower back. On cows it would be the tenderloin. Mm -hmm. So when they make uh, meat, the tenderloin, because it's the only thing that doesn't go through rigor mortis, like in order to make meat that's gone through rigor mortis edible, you have to age it for several weeks. But tenderloin you can serve immediately because it doesn't go through that process. So if scientists, he was saying, figure out a way to stop the body from going into rigor mortis, which starts to happen like a minute after you die, mm -hmm. then you would never have to age meat like that again. So this is weird. I don't want to turn this into an all-meat science uh, Q&A, but I, I find this very interesting. How long can a cow... Be dead. How much rigor mortis is there before it turns into inservable meat? Is it instant? I don't know uh, the rate at which it like rots or mm -hmm. anything, um, but I think it's pretty much instant. Like if you were to okay, because so I was gonna say if you were just like kill a cow right there and just like throw a steak on the fire it would, immediately, it would be a t it would have to be a tenderloin, but you could eat it immediately. Hmm. The rest of it you'd have to age because it would be gross. I learn so much every time I hang But I also think that's why when you hear stories about, um, I don't know, I've read like AMAs on Reddit from mm -hmm. people who worked in the morgue, and, and then everyone's like, what's the creepiest thing that's happened? And some people are like, well, sometimes when bodies are dead, they'll just sit straight up from a lying position yeah. to like an upright one. And I'm guessing it's because that part of your body hasn't gone through rigor mortis. Yeah, that makes sense. My friend used to work as a, uh, as a mortician's assistant. And he used to, yeah, he does special effects makeup for horror movies, so he, like, loved it. It was, like, his favorite high school job. And he said, yeah, the bodies would make, like, all kinds of weird noises. And, and they would, like, all kinds of weird, yeah. My friend would also, oddly enough, was an assistant at a morgue in high school. And it made her unable to ever smell cherry almonds again because they used that lotion there. Oh, and now yeah. it reminds her of dead bodies. <laughs> and now I think she ruined it for me, too. Um... What's the deal with the comments? That's a good question. I don't know. Probably self-aware, too. What's the deal with the comments, everybody? Um, how is studying English slash literature helpful to doing science, if at all? Hmm. That's a good question. You know, I'd say that's just helpful for life and general communication. awareness of the world around you. Yeah. You know, they say, uh, they say that there was a study a couple weeks ago that I did a report on for DNews about reading literature and specifically classical literature, raises people's level of empathy, oh. and emotional empathy. And so by that token, you know, knowing how to talk to people and understanding the way people are feeling at any given moment is really is really important to being able to to teach mm -hmm. or or to instruct. So maybe I can that see that. Way. Yeah. Um 
What else do we have? With your eggs video, how big was the mess? How many eggs were thrown at each other? It's a big mess. It was a big mess. <laughs> that was the messiest experiment we've done so far. Mm -hmm. And we had to film another one right after it, so... We were we not thinking. We didn't have a chance to shower or anything. We were not thinking. We should have done the no. other one first. Uh, Ty English 5 says, can you make a lightsaber? No, you cannot. You cannot make a lightsaber because you cannot stop light. That's the biggest problem with a lightsaber right now. You start light and it just goes. We have no way to contain it. Um, I wish we could make a lightsaber the same way. I wish we could make a jetpack. Nobody's asked a question about jetpacks yet, actually. I'm very surprised. I think there were some previously. Um, any plans slash aspirations to visit sites like Permalab, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, or Argonne? I would love to do some, like, field trip episodes or something. Um, I had a dream that I went to CERN. <laughs> really? I had a dream that, that I went to CERN. a nerdy CERN, dream. And they, let me, and they let me drive a little cart, like not like a full-size golf cart, but a little one like I used to have when I was a lifeguard at, at a country club. Uh -huh. Like a tiny club car. And they let me drive it around the tunnel in the LHC. Aww. And that was my dream. And I got to hang out with them. Well, we might be shooting some episodes at Stanford in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been trying to get everyone on the hard science team to take a field trip to the Exploratorium in San Francisco because it is really awesome. And once a week they do like a night thing where you can go to drink and there are no kids around, mm -hmm. so you can just go check out the The problem with most children's museums is the children. Yeah. And if you can just eliminate children, then they become wonderful Next places part to science. be. Next science. How do we eliminate children? <laughs> um... Would you be willing to release longer, sort of extended cut versions of each episode? You know, we get this question a lot. Um, and, <laughs> you know, I think every every show that I've ever worked on, actually, on YouTube, people say make the videos longer. Yeah. Um, and I think that's great because it means people want more information. It means they want to see the show more. They don't like They want to see more content. Mm -hmm. I think that's cool. But, I mean, what we found is actually... As we make the video longer, there are a few diehards who genuinely will keep watching as they get longer. But for the most case, people just kind of tune out. Yeah, and we do have outtakes of almost every episode that we do on the TestTube website, um, testtube.com slash hard science extras. A lot of people don't know about that. Uh, we, we've been getting a lot of comments of people like... We're going to start putting some of the extras on the YouTube channel as yeah. well. But if you guys haven't been following... Uh, a lot of our extras and outtakes and stuff like that. We always have one extra video on test tube. Mm -hmm. And they're usually like half the length of our normal episodes. Yeah. So, so that, together, that's 150% of what you want right exactly. there. Um, what is your favorite animal and why? I was not prepared for this question. Dude, that's a tough one. There's so many great animals. I know. I, I gotta tell you, I was a big sloth guy until I found out about the sloth poop cycle this week. What? Or last week, did you hear about this? The sloth has so many different little um, parasites living on it, and it leaves the tree. Who instead of you would think a sloth oh, would it just crawls down on a tree, yeah. but it and crawls down. It? it crawls down and it poops on the ground in order to let like the microscopic things get down into its poop so they can reproduce and like new ones can get up into it. Aww. And I just was like, you know. That's kind of ruining sloths for me right that now. That kind of makes me like sloths a little bit more. Uh, They're sustaining in their life. A sloth is sloths. like a biosphere. Like a walking <laughs> biosphere. Um, I, I love cats also. That's probably the most boring answer I could give to this question, but I do really love cats. I wish I wasn't allergic to them. At home, I have my Pomeranian Dagger Cannonball Thunderfang, who is the greatest dog in the history of all time. And I love him. And we have uh, a leopard gecko named Charles Manson is also pretty rad for a leopard gecko. And then I have a fish named Brianna of Tarth. I named it Brianna of Tarth because it's a fighting fish. Of course, yeah. as one would. Mm -hmm. I like hedgehogs a lot, too. Those Ugh. are super cute. They have yeah, attitudes and they smell. Oh my god, okay, maybe they smell, but I mean, I feel like every animal smells probably. True, some more than others. No animal smells great. Uh, rub your beard for science. I rub my beard just naturally every few seconds. It's a nervous tick. You don't have to ask for that. It's, it's just going to happen. Um, I don't know what I did with my hands before I grew a beard. Do you I remember know. what I did with my hands? Were they in my pockets mostly? Nick posted that old, our first Casual Friday video, and you didn't have a beard, and it was really weird. You looked naked. I don't like it. I don't like looking at it anymore, me without a beard. 
here. Uh, which experiment was the best one to do so far? I had been wanting to do the non-Newtonian fluid for a while. You had. You were really about that episode. That ended up being probably one of the most bl mind-blowing experiments that we did for me. Actually, I'm really excited about the episode that we have coming out. I don't know if it's next week or the week after. We filmed it a few days ago, but can we give them a hint? Uh, you guys, we had Michael Thurber from CDZA, if you watch CDZA Music on YouTube, uh, and we were doing some, some music-related experiments, and you can probably think, the, the first couple that you think of off the top of your head are probably the ones that we did. Yeah. But they were, they were really rad. Yeah, we haven't done any sound experiments yet, so that's going to be a really fun one. Um, and then, what was the other one that we did recently? Um, I really liked the LED lights one. Somebody yeah. commented on that episode and said it was a great date idea. And then it occurred to me afterward that it really is an awesome date idea. I never thought about that. Yeah, that one was really fun. That's another thing that I've been wanting to do for a while. I don't know if people watched that one. It was really cool. <laughs> it was really cool. It's probably the most accessible experiment that we've done, actually. Yeah, sometimes when people are like, oh, I can't do this at home. This would cost, uh, like, $1,000. We did one that was pretty easy. These LED throws were like a buck each. Yeah. They're so much fun to use. They really are. Uh, have you ever heard of the color paradox? How you can never know if the color you see every day is the same for everyone else. Yeah, I did a D-news about this, actually. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have heard of it, yes. I was talking about that also with my dad over Christmas break. Um, how weird it is. It is. It's super weird. But, you know, there are certain... Within certain, uh, uh, I guess, within a certain, uh, uh, what am I within a range, I'll just say range because I can't think of a fancy word that I'm trying to think of right now. Um, we can know that, yeah, red's pretty much red for everyone. Blue's pretty much blue for everyone because light is always doing the same things, mm -hmm. right? It's not like light is bending differently or refracting differently for anyone else. And then we also know that within a certain tolerance, tolerance, Within a certain tolerance, all of our eyes work the same way. I mean, obviously, there is color blindness. There are certain things that are different or off. But for the most part, it's all the same hardware. It's all the same software, and we know that it pretty much does look the same. I think the thing, I, maybe I was watching Brain Games on Nat Geo, and they were talking about how color doesn't exist, and it's just a product of the cones and rods in our eyes. Yeah. Yes. I could be completely misconstruing that. Yeah, well, if you think about the way um, something like, uh, think about the way uh, uh, bats, dogs, cats, the way they all see differently, you know, dogs only have two cones, mm -hmm. uh, so or, or two types of cones, so they see black and white. Uh, they see blue and yellow actually. Oh, really? And they have they have uh, no other, so they see limited color ranges. And then you have things like everybody knows about the mantis shrimp. The great, that's probably the greatest animal. The mantis shrimp. <laughs> Uh, can see like ultraviolet light. The, the, the mantis shrimp is like a, a living Blu-ray player. It can see all kinds of different light. Would you want to see that though? I feel like it's gonna. It would turn the sensory world overload, maybe. Yeah, it would turn the world into a very different place, right? Yeah. Because when you talk about seeing things like ultraviolet light and infrared light, you think, these these are things that we experience as radiation. So you're talking about seeing the waves around mm -hmm. us, which to a certain extent is kind of cool. Yeah. You know, magnetic kind of and things like that. Yeah. Um, how much do your supplies cost, and where do you get your supplies? Uh, we say Are you a cop. We say that on pretty much every episode. Usually, we have a breakdown of the cost at the end. If you don't tell us you're a cop, it's a trap. <laughs> um, I don't think any of our experiments have ever cost more than like five or six hundred bucks. And we don't get anything. We don't have any special clearances or anything like that. We don't get any chemicals that you couldn't get. Anywhere. No. So I mean, if you have a if you have a chemical supply place in your town, or you have access to Amazon, Amazon especially if you're doing things on a smaller scale than we do, we use you Amazon just do a lot. Like, if you just want to do like tabletop versions of the stuff that we do, you can find most of the stuff on Amazon. <laughs> don't make don't make anything dangerous. Don't blow anything up, and tell everybody that you got it from us. I like my job. We haven't blown anything <laughs> up really. Tara, what's your favorite math subject? Uh, my favorite math subject is statistics. That was my specialty in school. You were like a statistical analyst or something for a while. Right? Yeah, I was um, at a research uh, uh, bioinformatics lab at University of Texas Southwestern and then Virginia Tech University. But 
I think statistics is one of the most applicable areas of math to just the real world, and I don't know. I love it. In high school, when I was taking stats, uh, we had a TI-83, right? Mm -hmm. And I never did my stats homework because I had this Final Fantasy game that somebody oh, made. TI-83? And it uses, yeah, because it's turn-based. It was like, you know, and it used the lists oh, from so stats. Oh, text. And yeah, use the lists from uh, from the stats lists from memory to populate like strengths of monsters and things oh, like wow. that. So if you did your homework, it would screw up the game. And I refused to screw up the game <laughs> until I beat it. That should tell you where my stay in school guys. I played a lot of drug wars on my TI eighty three, so that probably says a lot about how about our paths in life. Um, do you like Doctor Who? <laughs> Yeah. I do not. Yeah, you are right that I like Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who. I grew up watching Doctor Who. It's one of my favorite, favorite things in the world. Uh, I got to, a couple months ago, I got to be part of the Doctor Who 50th anniversary special on the BBC. I was there. I was one of the hosts. I got to stand in a TARDIS. If you go to my Instagram, you can see a picture of me in the real TARDIS. It was David Tennant's first TARDIS, like from the first episode he appeared in, because they do a different one with a slightly different look for every Doctor. It was pretty rad. Um, you don't this like person, I don't like Doctor Who. This answer. person asked what degrees we have, and if, if any, and where we went to college. Well, I just answered mine. What about you? Uh, I actually studied video and animation. Uh, I studied digital media with a focus in video. Digital media is this thing that doesn't exist anymore because it comes from a time when people were like, what if we did all the creative things on computer? One day we'll use computers for everything. So it's like the lamest. But what was nice about it is it was a it was a course of study that let me study video editing and filmmaking and shooting and all that stuff and it, and it got me into it. The only like real the only technical education uh, or engineering education that I have is I I was a Microsoft certified systems engineer for a while. I was oh, an dear. IT I was a an You're IT guy designed Windows networks. That was. The end of that. Why is my memory bad? Probably because you're smoking too much pot. And you know what? Like, we, we were late. <laughs> get a planner. That's what I do. How did you get rid of all the cornstarch mixture? Oh, boy. We had to... <laughs> <laughs> we had to have a team of highly trained professionals, garbage men, we call them, Come and pick that stuff up, because that stuff is really heavy. It was a t like when we said it was a half ton. It's a half ton. It's a thousand pounds of stuff, and that was just <sighs> the cornstarch, right? That doesn't count the water that we had. To yeah, it doesn't count the water. Well, did it? No. Yes. It was a lot. No, it was, it was a lot. Really heavy. So we had to. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing is, uh, you stick a shovel into it, and it hardens <laughs> up. So you can throw it into like bags or buckets, and then it'll liquefy in like a moment after that. Yeah. So it's easy to get into whatever containers. And then you know the other thing is it's it's cornstarch and water, so it's not anything that's uh, environmentally hazardous. It's not anything that's dangerous to throw out, and uh, it, it biodegrades 100. percent So at least we have that going. Yeah. Away. Here's a good question. Do you think augmented reality technology like Google Glass or contact lenses that could project an image is going to take off in the near future and will it have a significant effect on the world? Did you see that real skeezy video that was going around last week where it was like a guy who had cool looking glasses that had augmented reality and he used it to do like all these really growy, fratty things like win at pool, like hustle people at pool and then hit on this really hot bartender by like bringing up her Facebook information and talking about her interests oh, and like God. using the skeeviest way possible. Sounds and terrible. It's terrible. It's the future. It's coming. <laughs> you better make sure that you have glasses at the same time everybody else has glasses. You do not want to be that poor that poor bartender. You do not want to you don't want the pickup artists of the world having these things before you do. Uh, it's true. I do think it's going to be a huge part of the future. I, I absolutely I don't know if people are going to be wearing glasses the same way that they are now, like with Google Glass, but like I'm sure you heard about those contact lenses that can sense um, if your, your blood sugar yeah. if your blood sugar is low. That is the kind of stuff that I really see being useful for this kind of technologies. Stuff to stop people from dying and having horrible accidents and stuff. I mean, eventually, the more that we can we can put vital information in front of us. I mean, we're already seeing it 
with our with our smartphones, with simple things like maps and stuff like that. Uh, the more we can put that unobtrusively in front of us, uh, the the better off mankind will be. But also, I'm I'm one of those people that's like a hesitant transhumanist, where it's like I love the idea of this stuff, but then we're gonna get to a certain point, and it's like. When do our brains become jelly? When do we become the fat people in the chairs from the wall? Yeah. Like, what's the line? <laughs> well, you know? even now, when you think back about a time before cell phones existed, like, I was 10 years old before my parents, either of my parents had a cell phone, and I can't remember that time of my life, you know? Like, it's not accessible to my memory. So I'm sure there will be a time, maybe 30, 40 years into the future, when we're like, man, you remember when people with diabetes didn't have a reliable and easy way to monitor. Remember when people had to poke themselves and draw blood to figure that shit out? I, when I was in high school, one of my buddies was one of the first people to get the internal, like the inside your body insulin pump. Mm -hmm. And I just, my grandfather had diabetes, and so I was like, what do you mean internal pump? And he, like, he showed it to me, and it's like the craziest thing. Yeah. You like hook that thing up, you've got like a, you it looks like a cereal port in your skin. It's yeah. so cool. Like, I wonder if we're going to have the same the same sort of nostalgia for the internet and for smartphones that, like, I kind of have for library card catalogs. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was quaint. It was such a fun way to find things. I was just having a conversation the other day, actually, about uh, the possibility of having GPS mm -hmm. uh, installed in your body and how, like, obviously there are terrible implications yeah. for that, you know, like, if it gets into the wrong hands. But at the same time, like, think about how many missing persons cases there are every year. That would... I put a chip in my eye, dude. Yeah, but, but the RFID chip is yeah. just to, I mean, signify that it's been. Um, one thing that I've always wanted to do is there's that thing where you can where you can slice into your finger. You can have somebody do it. You put a small industrial magnet in your finger, mm -hmm. and you will always know like where magnetic fields yeah. are around you. There was also a guy that uh, built a belt that could <coughs> tell where north is, and it was basically a belt of like the vibrators from mobile phones uh -huh. all around, and the one that was facing north was already was always vibrating. And after two weeks of wearing this belt constantly, he took it off and he had a much better sense of direction in the city because it was always alerting him to, like, where direction was. Is that something that stays with you forever, though, after you take it off, or is that just sort of a... You know, he did follow-ups for a little while, but this was a few years ago, and he hasn't, he hasn't done one. But he did say it, it kind of... It worked when he went to other cities as well. It just sort of made that part of his brain. It was probably like it's probably the hippocampus, right? That's where like the sense of direction comes from. Um, and they say that the like, cab drivers have an enlarged one. And so mm -hmm. I would be I would be shocked okay. if he didn't like start accessing that more often and, yeah. and kind of strengthen that muscle inside himself. I am being told from uh, the lovely and invisible Jackie Talbot. It's a bummer for you guys that she's lovely and invisible. Because you'll never know. Um, <laughs> uh, that we're going to take people live who have suggestions for future episodes. Yeah. And they're going to pop up because Google. And then you'll you'll tell us, and we'll just like tell you whether your idea is cool or not. Yeah. Your ideas are all going to be cool. But we can do it. Everybody's going to come up, and they're going to be like, here's the thing that I want to do. I'm going to be like, yeah, let's Get do it. it! <laughs> Please um, don't suggest Jen. Well, we're, um, how many jetpacks does it take to jetpack jetpacks? <laughs> you. Good question. You. Um, name one thing each that you'd like to make a show on but haven't due to cost, size, whatever, and why. Who's uh, that? There's that rocket bike I wanted to make. That rocket bike was expensive and dangerous. If only we could figure out a way to actually make the hoverboard from Back to the Future. I mean, everybody's, everybody in the world is sitting at home and saying that, though. Like, we're not the only ones. Someone will do it. We could do that. Man. Why can't it be us? It could be us. I, I think there are probably smarter people than us working on it. Not that I don't believe in us. You know what I mean? Love is an important component. Like, you know, love for us. I believe in us. Um, can you team up with Vsauce to make an awesome super science video? We can team up with anybody. Yeah. I'm not... I'm, shh, yes. Yes. It's so He's if awesome. you... You have suggestions for episodes, um, but if you have any suggestions for collaborations, we're also open to those, because we have been trying to get more people into our videos, um, so we can hang on the coattails yeah, of their success. It was fun to have Michael around. You know, it's yeah. fun. It's fun to have people that um, not even just not even just other science channels, but just people who have expertise in a certain exactly, field. You know, exactly. Exactly. Like, 
like Michael Michael doesn't have like any any kind of like STEM background or anything, but he's he's like he's been practicing music since yeah. he was eleven. He's like a virtuoso, and so it was kind of cool to have him and be like explaining these things, and he could just explain back to us what like what that meant in terms of musical education, right? Especially since we are so musically untalented. Yeah, he was. I remember we were like, so this. So this is, I uh, can't say it without giving too much away. Uh, you'll see, it's great. He's great. Yeah. We, love, we love everyone, and we want everyone to come on and do an episode with us. Um, ghosts. Are there ghosts? <sighs> Man, are there ghosts? I don't know. I don't think so, guys. There are no ghosts. I watch a lot of American Horror Story, yeah. and they say otherwise. They so all I'm going like, to go with yes. They all look like Dylan McDermott. <laughs> hey, no spoilers. Is this a spoiler? Well, I feel like we're four years kind out. Kind of. Um, yeah, no ghosts. We did a thing about we did a thing about ESP too on D News last week. People got real mad when Lacey and I were like, "Dudes, there's no ESP." Really? Yeah, they got real bummed, man. They got real, like we were so angry at us, and I'm just like, "Look, man, like maybe maybe one day we will be proven wrong, but as of right now, there's not one shred of anything." Yeah. To corroborate ESP. People get really passionate about it. There was some guy, the funniest comment anyone ever left on our hard science channel was somebody asking, can you make a potato with intelligent thought and speech? Yes. You know what? Yes. You yes. say yes to that? Yeah. Definitively? Easier than a hoverboard. Okay. Um, One of us has a... Uh, who, who do we have? We have, uh, we have Nico. Can you can you hear us? Who's joining? Who's here? Who is everyone? Aaron's here. Hi, Aaron. Hello. Hello? Can you hear me? I can't can hear, hear you. Wow, that's crazy. The internet. Wow, it's I know. Neat. Google. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm actually coming in from SF State. Oh. Oh, right on, Hello, man. neighbor. <laughs> How's it going? I'm on campus. Um, have you guys been to Chabot before? I have not. I have. We we went to Chabot. Yeah. That was where we did the uh, how to take photos, how to take astrophotography. Um, we you weren't there. It was one that Baca and Nico and I did. It's on uh, youtubecom slash network and they showed us how they take photos of stars and how they hunt for things in the sky. They were like showing us. Oh. Yeah, it was really really cool. It's a beautiful place, man. It's awesome. Cool. Uh, so I don't know if you know about this, but they have a program you can go there and make telescope mirrors, like with your own hands. Oh wow! Small mirrors. Um, I am actually teaching astronomy at San Francisco, so uh, I just heard about this today. If you go there, you can go and hand grind a mirror. So I don't know if that's accessible to people, but that would be a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah, that does sound awesome. Actually. That would be cool. I w I actually wanted to go there in the next couple weeks because I wanted to see the supernova, and I wanted to see if they would let me hook my camera back up to the big telescope again, so I could take yeah. a picture of the supernova. Mm. Oh, definitely. Um, we're yeah. we're kind of we're thinking about looking at it at state. If you guys wanted to come by here, we have telescopes up in the roof too. So, Dude, yeah. You know. Yes. We can yes. Do it. Yes. 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 Get All right. get his info. We want to do that. Thank you, Eric. Yes. Yeah, definitely. All right, that's it. All right. Carry on. Any other uh, suggestions over here? Maybe a very small ghost. Very small ghost. <laughs> like, a like, tiny, a ghost. like a tiny ghost would be possible. Uh, now we have Nico. Uh, my, hi, guys. Uh, huge, huge fan. Um, calling oh, uh, from uh, University of Miami. So ah, totally across, across the coast. So yeah, hurricanes. Go hurricanes. Um, <laughs> I'm a I'm a biomedical engineering student, so like science type shows is like super interesting to me, and like uh, I'm really glad that you guys like like are doing the show because I mean there's not really I mean I don't have much time for YouTube because I'm really busy because I'm an engineering student, but like I like the fact that you guys are doing the show just means a lot, and I really appreciate it. Like in Thank term, you. In Thank terms you. of like, because I'm watching like five hours of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. probably it's, pretty. <laughs> in terms of like ideas for shows, um, like uh, I know like groups doing stuff with like groups of people is really hard because you, like there's like consent forms, and, like waivers and stuff. But like there's like a bunch of different like psychology experiments that I think would be interesting. Like in terms of like like suggesting like phrases and seeing how people like turn and like like 
I know like a, a bunch of like I want to tie it back into biomed because I know like you were talking about transhumanism earlier and like I typed a question in the chat but, like as you were saying like what are your opinions of transhumanism and then you said something about transhumanism like I just like wow that's like we're same same wavelength or something but like um like I don't know something like suggesting an idea on paper that might sound somewhat controversial but like like kind of like taking two different groups of people and saying if we word it this way how do people respond and if we word it another way how do people respond like something like that yeah yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff about that and one of the things that i've been looking at recently it's been coming up a lot is like neuro marketing and the whole field of neuro marketing and, and how to how to create advertising based off yeah. just like base things that occur in your brain no matter what uh, one thing that we talked about is actually uh, having our friend Brian Brushwood, who is uh, a magician and uh, has a show called Scam School, and was also a professor for a little while at UT Austin. Ah. And we were thinking about having him come on, because he does a lot of street magic, and all of that stuff is basically suggestion, misdirection, yeah. prompting, and, and I think something like that would be really cool. I would love to They that. have the, um, the hand experiment, the rubber oh, hand illusion. I love that. Yeah, that was on our, our list of experiment uh, episodes for a while. We were trying to think of a way that we could sort of do something like that on a much larger scale. So yeah, because the thing about the rubber hand videos, it's kind of like it's, it's hard to convey a feeling. Yeah, it is. You I know, mean, people like flinch and stuff, but yeah, I think the whole psychology area of science is something that we haven't really explored yet, and I would love to do more of that. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Great job. Thanks. Um, so we have somebody who's uh, who seems to be audio only. And that's cool, because we got ears, says Sergeant McCloud. Whoa. Somebody pulling rank on us? <laughs> it looks like everything is muted right now. OK. Uh, you may need to unmute yourself, Sergeant. Oh, wait, it went away. Hello? There he is. Oh. No, nope, it went back. For a split second, he was unmuted. Hello. Hello! Hello. Didn't, no, not, not Sergeant or anything, just in the stream, just watching, you know, just Casually, really, really tired. Twenty to one in the morning. Oh dear. Oh. Well, thanks for staying up or getting up early. <laughs> I, I I appreciate your honesty. I'm giving you a promotion <laughs> to sergeant. Excellent. God, then watch your supernova video, and I well, I've convinced my parents and brother to go up there with me and watch it with some really good binoculars. So hopefully, we'll get a good view and. Yeah, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be getting more and more visible over the next week, uh, and it should. I mean, even with our, we have the crappiest home telescope. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jess was saying that she was able to find it. She thinks she was able to find it, but she's waiting to take a picture. So uh, you, you should have some luck, hopefully. Excellent. We haven't got a tripod or anything like that. Or so we're just going to try and sort of lean on something and just look straight up, straight up at that. Straight up at it. You got a younger sibling, just put the binoculars on his head and tell him to stay really still and hit him. <laughs> Excellent. Well, then I'll mute myself and just go back to watching if that's cool. Oh, well, yeah, totally. Here. Excellent. Have a good night. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, the lovely and invisible Jackie Talbot just says a literal baby just joined. Yes. We would love to see the baby. Please let us see the baby. Hello. <laughs> You're not a baby. You're a you're a grown human. You may need to unmute this mic. There you go. Hey, what's up, man? What's your name? Hi. What's your name? Max. It's hey, Max. Me. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Did you have an idea for an episode, Max? I I just had one question. What was your favorite childhood memory? Oh. Oh, dear. Man, that's a hard one. Gee. Um, oh, boy. You know what? When I was a kid, my parents lived on a cul-de-sac, mm -hmm. and we had um, a cowbell in our backyard that mm -hmm. my mom would use to uh, ring to let us know it was time to come in for dinner, and the sound of that bell is a very, very happy memory from my childhood, because it always meant that I was going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents turned you into a little Pavlovian dog. That's true. I love it. Um, man, I would have to say, 
that my, my favorite memory was um, back behind my next door neighbor's yard in uh, New York, they, we had what we called the forest, which I think probably now that I'm in person, it was maybe like 12 to 15 feet of trees. Yeah. Uh, but we used to go, we used to go back exploring in there and, and like mapping it and mm -hmm. stuff like that. We, we used to just love doing that, like looking for secret caves and stuff. We never found one because it was 15 feet of trees. Yeah. It was really neat to be out there and, and just like, exploring around. And I remember that's probably like my love for specialized equipment probably came from that. Like, yeah. Gadgets and stuff, because I used to love having like a compass and yeah. having a map and being able to find my, like, having a canteen. Yeah, you feel like a real scientist. Yeah. I used to love doing that. And then uh, we got video games and I never went outside again. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> How about you, Max? You seem like a happy kid. What's been your favorite day so far? In the life um, of this is Google Hangout, isn't it? This, this is it. <laughs> it's all downhill from here. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you don't need to butter her up, man. You yes, need... you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Max, are you into science? Yes. Yeah. What's you... your What's your favorite subject of science? Um, like, like you like chemistry or biology? Chemistry. chemistry? chemistry? Really? That's my least favorite. Uh -huh. I'm so bad at chemistry. Maybe you can teach me a thing or two. Thanks for coming, Max. Mm. Thank you. Uh. <laughs> um. So we have, uh, we're going to take our last person. He is uh, Chris, and he's been waiting very, very patiently. Oh, my gosh, he's freaking out. Unmute yourself, Chris. Chris! Wait, there wait, you go. Oh. What's up, dude? Hey, how's it going? Oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm talking to you guys. Hey, man. How are you? Doing great. I love hard science. I'm actually trying to get my library at school to play all your videos, like, on a repeated list to inspire everybody to be like, man, I should like science more than... Language arts, because I'm terrible at language arts. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's awesome, man. Thank you. I, you know, we've heard a couple times from schools that have been, like, showing our stuff, and I'm always like, <gasps> I know, like, like, oh, wait, are you sure you want to do that? I sure, like, make a conscious effort not to curse during any of our videos. It's really difficult. You're like a, you're like a sailor. I'm a drunken sailor. You really are. <laughs> so what's going on, man? Did you, have a, did you have an idea for a show? Something you wanted to uh, see? Anything with rockets. Trying to... I don't know. Experiment with rockets. Yeah, we should do something fun. with rockets. Yeah. Like a bottle rocket or something? Maybe, like but bigger? something crazy, yeah. We, we gotta do something crazy with a rocket. Rockets, we've been told by Kishore and Zeke, are some of the most dangerous things to get crazy with. I you don't want to get crazy with a rocket. Challenge, though. Yeah, but that just makes me want to do more rockets. There yeah. was a rocket bike on the table for a while. Really? And I was like, really, yeah. It was a tandem. It was, we were going to do a two-seat rocket propelled bicycle. Huh. Just a little, just a little, little friendly ride. I you feel and like me. we could do that. We could totally do that. I'm going to put it back on the table, Chris. <laughs> I was told that it was dangerous and expensive, but now I'm going to say that there's just like a huge outpouring of audience interest in this. Yeah, it's enormous. That is one rocket. One hundred percent of all the Chris's we've surveyed that watch the show. <laughs> Say, this is how most studies are done and how most exactly. most findings are reported. By yeah, that's how One hundred percent of all Chris's say that we need to do those rocket bikes, so we need to do this. Yeah, we haven't had enough explosions on our show either. I think so. Even if something bad does happen, quality television. We should call Tori up and do some explosions on the show. Yeah, should do that. Thanks, man. I'm yeah. going to use you as leverage to do my rocket bike. <laughs> all right, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, wow. Yeah, that went by quick. I know. It's like almost 5 o'clock already. How does time work? Uh, that was a question that we don't have time to get to. Ah! <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Uh, I have a list of things that oh? the lovely Invisible Jackie said to us. Did you oh, right. Things, things? Uh, yeah, things that uh, we want to talk Things that you should know. Things that you should know. Uh, so, you know, by the way, if you're, if you're watching, you know, youtube.com slash hard science show. Yes. Testtube.com slash hard science show. Uh, we have a Twitter. At I hard think it science might just show. be hard science on Testtube. Oh, testtube.com slash hard science. It's confusing because hard science was taken on both Twitter and YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we had to go with hard science show yeah. in there. But on te if you are watching it on the native uh, Testtube site, it's just 
uh, test2.com slash hard science, and then the extras are at slash hard science extras. Yeah, we got a Tumblr, which is hard science show .tumblr We put a lot of we put a lot of gifs. A lot the of good gifs on there. Gifs. We put a lot of gifs yes. up there, or you know, depending on what code, depending on when you say soda or pop, it's Car pop. caramel or caramel. Um, so be sure to watch all that uh, to click on all of those things. Do those. Um, you also facebook.com slash hard science show. Facebook is mostly for moms, but if you're not on Facebook. We're there. Our, our videos get some traction on, on Facebook. Uh, I put things on Facebook specifically so I know my mother sees them. And that way I don't have to call her every day. No, I put them on to show people from my high school that I'm not dead yet. <laughs> and not only am I not dead, I'm doing cool things. Yeah. I was a nerd, and now I'm exactly. cool. Take it. Um, and then we're, not, we're not petty. That's not why we do this. I mean, we kind of are a little bit. Um, but I'm also on Twitter at uh, Tara Longest, and he is A Carboni. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, and you know, guys, keep keep sending in suggestions to all those. You know, if we didn't get you on the chat, but anything you want to see, you guys have been really great. You asked so many great questions at the bottom of like underneath every video. There's so many great questions here in the chat. We've got like, dude, man, it's really nice to have a nice and smart YouTube audience. It really is. <laughs> I mean, not saying anything about games, but you guys are way better <laughs> than games. It's just, it's really, yeah, we, we have a lot of really smart and, and, and just, like, inquisitive and curious people, and those are the best kind of people. So thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. Change. And uh, we'll see you. We got a new one on Wednesday with Michael Thurber from CDZA, but we're not going to tell you what it's going to be. It's exciting. One of my favorites. All right, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>